I have been a patron of Mercy Ships for well, quite a few years now, and I was originally invited to be so by Ian McCall, who's one of the surgeons who spends so much of his time actually operating on the ships itself. And he explained to me what the charity was about, and it seemed to me it was a unique charity with a unique ethic and facing a particularly unique need. And so I was immediately attracted to it, and I've enjoyed the experience ever since. Well, there are things it does that nobody else can do, or certainly is doing at the present time. In a world of about six and a half billion people, there are about one and a half billion who have no medical treatment at all, no, no basic medicine. For them, they might just as well be living in the 11th or 12th century with no medicine available, no dentists, no painkillers, no opticians, no basic medical care, even for the most minor ailments. And the impact of that is quite extraordinary. It means an awful lot of people die who shouldn't die. An awful lot of people suffer who shouldn't suffer. And it has many other impacts on their lives as well. Not only are people not properly treated, but many of them have ailments that make them outcasts. If they have a physical disability in many parts of the world, they are just cast out. People are frightened of their disability. Now, this is something wholly beyond the understanding of most people in the civilized world, the fact that there is no basic medical care at all. And Mercy Ships provides that. And I put myself in the mind of somebody who lives there, and suddenly, out of nowhere, comes this great ship, and it offers all sorts of medical care that revolutionizes their lives. People uh, who have suffered uh, for generations, are suddenly cured. People who are outcast are brought back into the village. And the great tragedy of what Mercy Ships do is not what we do, but what we can't do. The people who queue for treatment in there, tens of thousands, and can't all, of course, be treated. And that's why we need to improve what we do, but more important, increase what we do. And I think anyone who saw what Mercy Ships did and wasn't moved by it would have no soul at all. Unfortunately, this uh, problem of people getting no medical care isn't just in an isolated place. It's in all sorts of poor parts of the world. And the beauty of the Mercy ship is that it is mobile. You have this huge ship with a large number of operating theatres, a large number of staff, medical staff, all of whom, incidentally, are volunteers and unpaid. They work on a rotor system. They give their time entirely for free. Indeed, they even pay for their food while they're there. But the ship moves round to where it perceives uh, the most important need, and is able to treat people there. So it's a, a remarkable concept, and uh, and one that has taken aid to many different parts of the world. We're always a month ahead of the mob, as it were. So raising money is a constant. We have to do that. But the absolute guarantee that we're able to give to the people who over the years have been so generous to us is that we don't spend the money. It goes on medical care and on uh, treating people who otherwise would have a thoroughly miserable time with no other help available whatsoever. I think Mercy Ships is unique, not only because of what it does, but it has a unique ethic, it faces a unique problem, and it deals with it in a unique way. I know of no other charity who approaches the problems of health in that fashion, and for that reason, I think it is a very remarkable organisation.